Got some past exam questions here on carboxylic acids and esters. So if you wanted to test yourself on these, the link to the questions is in the description. So just download them, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. Okay, so the first one, we've got the stearic acid and sodium hydroxide. So they're going to form the salt, sodium stearate and water. So sodium stearate would be c 17 h 35 COONA and you also get water. There's the answer to BI, so uh, octadec 12 inoic acid, it's got 18 carbons and the double bond starts at 12, so you must count from the um, functional group and get the 12 and then you put your double bond in. The trans form is because the hydrogens in this case are on opposite sides of that carbon-carbon double bond. Second part of the question, I've kind of already hinted at the answer. One other feature, apart from the lack of rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond that enables it to show cis-trans, well, for cis-trans, you've got to have an identical atom or group of atoms on each carbon of the double bond. And you can see, in this case, we've got hydrogens. It doesn't always have to be hydrogens. It could be a CH3 there and a CH3 there. For example, you just got to have identical things on each carbon of the double bond. Question two, if the OH group was a hydrogen, that would be propanoic acid. It's not a hydrogen, it's a hydroxyl group. So we call it 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. So moving on to part B, you've got to suggest the structure for the cyclic diester. So if you remember, esters are formed by, by the reaction of carboxylic acid groups and alcohol groups, which we've got both of in the lactic acid. So if it's a diester, we've obviously got two of these molecules combining together. And see what I've done here, I've drawn this one, the way that they drew it um, on the previous part of the question, I've drawn this one the other way around so that the carboxylic acid group is next to the alcohol group and vice versa here. And then what I do is I call it lasso chemistry. So I'm going to take the OH of the uh, alcohol on the top um, lactic acid and I'm going to combine it with the hydrogen of the carboxylic acid group and make the water molecule. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. So I need the OH and the H there. So you obviously would form two moles of water, but what's left of this organic structure would form the diester. So I'll just draw that up now. Moving on to question three. So 3A in the box below, draw the structure of the organic compound formed by reaction one. So we've got an excess of sodium hydroxide. So we've got to ask ourselves, what can sodium hydroxide react with in salicylic acid? Well, it can react with the carboxylic acid group but it can also react with this OH group because this is technically a phenol and phenols do react with sodium hydroxide. So that's what you would get there. Next part of the question, describe what would be observed during reaction two. So if we just look at reaction two, we've got salicylic acid reacting with bromine. And you can see we've got the bromine has uh, substituted at this position here, directly opposite the OH group. So if we think about when bromine reacts with phenol, what do we get? Well, we observe a white precipitate and the decolorization of bromine. So we're going to get the same here. So the equation for that reaction, so obviously that's the product that we've been given. So what's happened, the hydrogen that is here has substituted for this bromine. So we're also going to make a mole of HBr. And the final part of the question, state the reagents and conditions for reaction three. So we'll just have a look at that. So what's happened here? The salicylic acid, uh, the COH group in salicylic acid is converted to an ester group. So this here must be an alcohol. So that's going to be propan all And we also need concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst and heat. Question four now, so the hydrolysis of the triglyceride or triester 
um, would break these bonds here, the ester bond, and so the alcohol that's formed is obviously going to be from this structure here. So turning that into an alcohol, it's going to be propane 1, 2, 3, triol. And finally, moving on to the structures of the other organic products of the hydrolysis. So because it's sodium hydroxide, aqueous sodium hydroxide that's being used, we're going to get the sodium salts of these things here. So because these two bits here are the same, we're going to get two lots of that. And obviously this one here would be coming from this. Okay, so moving on to the final question, we've got the structural formula of mandelic acid. I've drawn a displayed formula as well. I think it's quite helpful to, to see it in a bit more detail. So the first part of the question, draw the structure of an organic compound that could react with mandelic acid to form ester 1. So the first thing I want to do is the mandelic acid is obviously used to provide this part of the molecule here. So we need an alcohol to provide this part here. So the alcohol in question is going to be this. So it's propantool. Ester 2 is using this part of the mandelic acid. So well, this part here must be a carboxylic acid. And so we've got this here. So final part of the question, we've got to explain why ester 1 is less soluble in water than mandelic acid. So I've copied the ester 1 structure and written out the mandelic acid structure. And the answer to this question is all to do with the ability of the molecules to form hydrogen bonds with water. So ester 1 and mandelic acid are very similar because they've both got the benzene ring. And then you've got the CHOH, CHOH. This is where it differs, so we've got an ester group and then this 2-propyl group here, whereas on mandelic acid we've got the carboxylic acid group. So obviously both molecules can form hydrogen bonds at the OH group, the hydroxyl group. Ester 1 can form hydrogen bonds with the hydrogen of water um, via these oxygens, but it can't form hydrogen bonds with the oxygen of water because it doesn't have a hydrogen directly bonded to the electronegative oxygen. Whereas in mandelic acid, you've got those two oxygens, so it can form hydrogen bonds just like that one could. However, it's got an extra um, way of forming hydrogen bonds via that H. So a water molecule can orientate itself with the oxygen um, and form uh, hydrogen bonds with that hydrogen, whereas that can't do that. Okay, so diagram wise, I could have gone for hydrogen bond with the OH group of the alcohol or this oxygen or this oxygen, but because I'm going to reference this extra way, I've gone for the hydrogen bonding um, with the H of the carboxyl group. So the things they're looking for here is the dipole across the OH bond, dipoles in the water lone pair on the oxygen and um, dotted line going to the delta positive hydrogen and obviously label up the hydrogen bond as well. So in terms of what I'm going to write, I'm just saying something like this. Mandelic acid has more ways to form hydrogen bonds with water than ester 1, as well as the OH group of the alcohol and the O atoms of the carboxyl group. It also has the hydrogen of the carboxyl group, making it more soluble than ester 1.